Dan, so glad to be with you. I apologize for starting a bit late, but we thank God for his goodness and his mercy. How are you doing? My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. Today I've decided to use my phone to reach out to you, okay? I remember at some point you were telling me that it might be a good idea once in a while to use the phone so that we achieve some element of intimacy, okay? Just tell me how the reception is. How are you receiving me? Yeah. Let me know if the reception is good, if the, um, the sound is good, the lighting is good. I'd like to know so that we can make adjustment if there's need. All right, it's Monday, and I promise you that I would be dealing with uh, finances, and I want to talk about a topic that I have handled in the past, and this topic is on time and chance. So the topic for tonight is time and chance, your ticket to financial success. Time and chance, your ticket to financial success. How are you going to use your time and your chance to succeed financially. How are you gonna use your time and your chance to succeed financially? And not just financially, but in many other areas as well. So I wanna take you through scriptures. This is something I've taught in the past, but um, I'll be glad to teach it again because Peter said that I will not be tired of reminding you of this truth, though you are established in the present truth so i will not be tired of reminding you of this truth even though you establish in the present truth so what what helps ladies and gentlemen is when we consistently remind you of these things okay the word of god is not literature the word of god is life so the word of god is like food so you can't say well i ate food yesterday so i'm not going to eat again today Oh, I drank water yesterday, so I'm not going to drink water again today. You have to keep eating, you have to keep drinking so that you can sustain your life. And the same applies to the Word of God. You have to keep reading it and you have to keep reminding yourself of it. You cannot say that you read Psalm 23 many years ago and you know it, so there's no point reading it again. Every time you read any portion of Scripture, you get brand new life from it because the Word of God is life okay the word of god is life the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruits thereof so the word of god is life so if you want life speak the word of god if you want death speak the word that comes from the world but our topic for tonight is time and chance your ticket to financial success time and chance your ticket to financial success i want you to be successful in every single thing that you do. All right. Now, there is room for intelligence in every single thing that we do as human beings or as children of God, but intelligence will not necessarily make you a successful person. It's one aspect of the path towards success. So it's important that you get your intelligences in place. Uh, in fact, the Greek word for intelligence is sunesis, you know, uh, running together when you feel like you're together with points. When, you see, usually when people teach, they say, are we together? So that question, are we together, is what is sunesis. In other words, you're running together with concepts, with insight, with the ideas that are being given to you or being taught to you. So intelligence is important, but that's not all that it takes to be a successful person. There is something much more, okay? There is something much more than just having a degree qualification. There's something much more than just having a specialized skill. So this is why in the book of Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, the Bible says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not of the swift. Okay, so if you're swift, if you're a fast runner, the race is not to you. The race is not to the swift, the Bible says. The race is not to the swift. So what if you're swift? You will not necessarily win. If you're swift, you will not necessarily win the race because the race is not to the swift, the Bible says. And the Bible also says that the battle is not to the strong. So there are 
the first one, the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. So if you're intelligent, if you're a swift person, if you're quick-witted, you will not necessarily win the race. The race is not to the swift. And the Bible says the battle is not to the strong. So the strong will not always win war. And the Bible says neither yet bread to the wise. So you can have wisdom. You can have the ability to deal with war. You can have the ability to deal with religion, um, ethics. You can have the ability to deal with accounting, inventions, you know, wit inventions. That's what wisdom, the word wisdom here talks about. You can have the ability to plan, you know, to do nice business plans. You can have the ability to compute and still not be successful, you see. So you may have studied these things in school and you thought, okay, now I have my computer degree or my IT degree or what. I think I have ticket, my ticket for success. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? I'm going to show you what really will help you to succeed in life. Apart from your degree qualification, apart from your skills, apart from your intelligence, there is something much more. And the Bible says, riches do not come to men of understanding. So those who have the ability to discern and to decipher will not necessarily be rich, okay? Riches is not for those who have understanding, really. And favor doesn't necessarily come to those of skill. So your skill will not necessarily give you favor, okay? And the Bible says, what helps is time and chance. The Bible says time and chance happens to all, okay? So, I want to discuss with you these five points that have been raised by the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes. Number one, that the race is not to the swift, but you must still have speed. Because if you don't have speed, you're not going to succeed. All right? The race is not to the swift, but you still must have speed. Okay? So you must have speed. You must develop the habit of being efficient and quick. In all you do, never postpone or procrastinate. You want to be a successful person in anything, whether in business, marriage, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your faith as a child of God, you must develop speed. You must be a person who is efficient, who does things quickly, a person who never postpones nor, or, or procrastinates. Do not postpone, do not procrastinate. If there's work to be done, do that work. If there's something that needs to be done, do it. Do not postpone. Do not procrastinate. Okay? Are we together? Yeah? In other words, are we running together? Glory to God. So do not postpone. Do not procrastinate. Don't say, I'll do this job tomorrow. No, do it today. Don't go to bed before you finish the work that you ought to do. Okay? No procrastination. No postponement. All right, your to-do list must be empty all the time. If you go to your office and there's a stack of documents that you need to work on, make sure that you do your level best to clear the stack of documents before you leave that office, okay? If it means working up to midnight, so be it. Make sure that by the time you're leaving your office, you finish the work for the day. So to that extent, you'll be efficient and you'll be swift. Do your work quickly. If you're given an assignment, nobody should go reminding you about your assignment. You should never be reminded about the work that you know is yours to do. Do it and finish it without supervision. You don't need to be supervised at all. You need to just work and do it efficiently and do it in speed. That's how you become a successful person in life. There is no, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there's no magic to these things. Yeah, there's nothing absolutely unique about success other than the fact that you need to be efficient and you need to do your things in speed. Why is it that some of our African nations are not so successful in life? Why is that? The reason is because of lack of efficiency, systems that don't run efficiently. So we lack in speed, we lag behind, okay? It's like having an internet provider that is not fast. If you don't have fast internet, you know, downloading things and uploading things will take you long. So the first thing you need to do is have speed and efficiency. And please don't postpone and do not procrastinate anything. Do your work and do it well. Let me tell you something. By the time I'm going to bed today, I'll have finished all my work for the day. 
There's nothing I'm going to postpone to be done tomorrow. I'll finish it today. If I'm going to sleep at 4 a.m., so be it. Until I finish my work, I'm not going to sleep. You understand? And that's how you become a successful person in life. And by the way, it doesn't kill. Instead, it will give you life. A person who is hardworking, a person who is uh, diligent, a person who is focused, is not going to die. Okay? Poverty will kill you, though. All right, number two. So the Bible says the race is not to the swift, but you still need to develop speed. Okay? So that when you combine speed with time and chance, you become a successful person. So number two, activate strength from within your spirit as you speak in tongues and as you declare God's word in all situations. It's your choice to be strong. So you can't say, oh, I can't take this anymore. I don't have strength anymore. Strength comes from within you. And when you speak in other tongues, when you speak in other tongues, you'll find yourself strong. You'll find that strength comes from within you. Let me tell you something about tongues. Even if you are physically feeling worn out, worn out, you're physically feeling tired, and you begin to talk in tongues for 15 minutes, nonstop, you'll find your strength returning to you. And the Bible says God restores your, he restores your soul, okay? He renews your youth like that of an eagle. God can renew your strength. So you can't say, oh, I'm feeling too tired. I don't think I can take it anymore. I don't think I can carry on with work anymore. I don't think I can continue anymore. No, 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 no. When you talk in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, your strength is going to be renewed. So talk in tongues. Activate your strength from within your spirit. And you do that when you talk in other tongues, okay? There is no two way about that. You need to be a tongue talking person. That's how you know you're full of the Holy Spirit. A child of God must speak in tongues. If you're not speaking in tongues, you're not in the spirit. You must speak in tongues. That's how you'll be able to connect to the spirit of God. And tongues is the language of angels. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1, that though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels, but I do not have love, I have nothing. That means there are tongues of men, which is what I'm speaking to you right now. And there are tongues of angels when we begin to talk in tongues. The Bible says when we talk in other tongues, our spirits are speaking, but our minds are unfruitful. So your mind doesn't understand it because success goes beyond your cognitive ability. Success goes beyond your ability to understand things mentally. Success is a spiritual thing. And that's why you need to talk in other tongues. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Okay. Um, hallelujah. Today I'm coming to you on my phone. Okay. So I'm not using all the cameras. I'm coming to you on, on my phone and I'm just sit, seated there feeling nice, enjoying myself while I minister this word to you. Glory to Jesus. So number one, you need to have speed. Number two, you need to activate strength from within your spirit as you speak in tongues and as you declare God's word. So after talking in tongues, if you talk like that for 15 minutes, you know, Try one hour and see. Things will just open up for you. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the secrets to spiritual success. Just try and talk in tongues for an hour and see. And make that a habit every single day. One hour talking in tongues. I'm telling you, you'll start hearing things in the spirit. You'll start seeing things in the spirit. You'll start knowing exactly what to do when it comes to business. You'll start understanding scriptures. The things of God will start becoming easy and nice. Okay? All right. So that's how you activate strength from within you. Number three, you must... Activate wisdom through speech. You must activate wisdom through speech. Now, this wisdom is called hokma. And hokma wisdom, I've taught this before in the different types of wisdom. Hokma wisdom is the wisdom that enables you to win war. It's also the wisdom that enables you to operate in administration. Wisdom for administration, okay? So, this is wisdom that enables you to fight and win battles. You, you'll fight and win wars. And this wisdom will enable you to be a good administrator. And this wisdom enables you to operate in spiritual matters correctly. Matters to do with ethics and spirituality. This is wisdom that enables you to live your Christian life the way you ought to. And this is also wisdom that enables you to operate numbers. Wisdom that enables you to compute and to plan. You get that? The wisdom that enables you to account, it gives you the ability to be a good accountant. You can account for your finances and the things that God has given you. That's 
uh, called Chokmah wisdom. So you must have that wisdom. And that wisdom comes through speech. The Bible says, does anybody lack wisdom? Let them ask. If you want wisdom, you ask. If you want wisdom, read the word of God. The word of God is the, you know, it's God's wisdom. The word of God is God's wisdom. That's how he operates. And that's how he expects us as his people to operate. Okay, so get the word into your system. You will have this wisdom. And wisdom also operates when you're cognizant, when you're aware of it, when you're cognizant. Your awareness gives you wisdom. For example, I'm aware that I'm a man, so I operate as a man. If I wasn't aware that I was a man, I would not operate as a man. Yeah, you can start operating like something else. So you have to be aware that you're a man. I have to be aware that I'm a child of God and that enables me to operate in power and to operate uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. The awareness is very important. So that's how you get this wisdom activated in your life. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Now, number four, you must have understanding, perception or discernment. You must have understanding, perception or discernment. Understanding, perception or or discernment okay and this comes from good knowledge of god's word so you see all these things demand that you know the word of god and that you know the word of god really well so you must be a person given to thorough study of the word of god thorough and consistent study of the word of god you must be a person given to thorough and consistent study of the word of god so that you can develop discernment now discernment is what we call dokimazo, the ability to judge situations correctly. So if you're going to do business, you can judge correctly that this is the place to put in money and this is the place not to put in money. This is the time to put and this is the time to, you know those things, to call. This is the time to buy shares, this is the time to sell shares, okay? You are able to know by the grace of God and by his anointing and by his word, exactly what to do at any given moment because you have discernment you have the right kind of judgment you have righteous judgment okay glory to jesus forevermore hallelujah hallelujah okay so if you have righteous judgment it becomes much easier for you to know when to do what you ought to do okay i hope you're understanding and if you are please let me know yeah let me know if you're understanding what i'm talking about glory to jesus forevermore do you understand? If not, ask. Okay, I want to teach you how to be successful financially. All right, this is these are the steps. Number one, you need to develop speed. Okay, number two, so number one, develop what speed. Then number two, glory to Jesus. Um, number two, you need to have wisdom, and wisdom comes. Uh, Okay, let me just take it. Let me just take you systematically. So, number one, you need to have sp speed. Number two, you need to have inner strength. Strength to overcome. Strength to succeed. Now, if you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon Jesus. The Spirit, it's called the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, uh, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So, there's a Spirit of might. That's the spirit that gives you the ability to be strong, even in the face of difficulties. And that spirit is the spirit of might. And that spirit comes upon you when you talk in other tongues, okay? And then number two, activate wisdom. This is wisdom for war, wisdom for administration, wisdom for computation, wisdom for planning, wisdom for accounting, okay? Wisdom for ethics. These are the things you need in business, okay? Then the next one, number four, you must have understanding, perception, discernment. This comes from the word of God and this enables you to make the right decisions at the right time. So some people lose money because they make the wrong decisions. Some people lose money because they invest in the wrong things. Some people lose money because they, they're not listening to instructions when instructions are given to them. They always make the wrong judgment. They always take the wrong turn whenever they're dealing with things. So when you have discernment, which is actually a spirit, there's a spirit of discernment, that God gives you, and this comes from the Word of God, so that every time you're making decisions, you base them on the Word of God, not on your culture, sometimes not even on your training. Sometimes you're trained in a certain way, and your training doesn't work, but the Word of God works all the time, okay? Because the Word of God is what God uses to do His business, and it's worked for Him, 
It is working for him right now. It will work for you as well. Hallelujah. Okay, then the last one, you must have skill. In other words, train yourself, have a certain skill. What are you good at? What is this thing that you can do and do well? You need skill, okay? That's very significant. You need what? Skill. Okay. Now, these five things are important to anyone that needs to succeed. However, the five points are not enough. Yeah? There's something more you need to do. You can, you can have speed. You can have strength. You can have wisdom. You can have understanding, perception, discernment, and all that. You can have skill, but that's not enough. For you to succeed in life, in anything, in your marriage, in your finances, in whatever you do, for you to succeed, you need to know how to handle your time and your chance. I've spoken about this, especially last year. I talked about this last year, and I want to just repeat, because sometimes people forget. Time and chance is what you need for you to be successful in life. Time and chance and how to handle time and chance. Now, let's define time and chance. But before that, let me just see who we have online. Okay? I need to greet you guys. I can see Stella Kigutanganga is watching with us. God bless you so much. So happy to have you with us. Nelly David is with us. God bless you. Stella says, Dr. Wale Akinyemi says, the speed of the cheetah was not an advantage in entering the ark. That's right. The door of the ark only shut when the tortoise got in. <laughs> so though the tortoise was a slow animal, the tortoise still got into the ark. Okay. Birds were able to fly, but that was not the guarantee that they would enter the ark. This is really good. Wow. Glory to Jesus. Uh, I can see Quira Dennis is online as well. God bless you. Fanti George is online too. God bless you. Faith Jasmine, uh, God bless you, my dear. Oh, I love you guys. I can see Franz Weber is online too. God bless you. Happy to have you guys. Please just invite your friends and share this widely so that people can learn how to deal with time and how to deal with chance, okay? Right, so here we go. So how do we define time? You know, people think time is 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah, that's time. But spiritually, if you want time to work for you, how do you define time if you want it to work for you? So I'm here to help you to succeed. If you want time to work for you, how do you define it? So time is defined as an occurrence. An occurrence. Is there an occurrence somewhere? So if you're a business person, you need to find out, is there an occurrence? Has something occurred? Do you know that every occurrence is an opportunity to make money? Did you know that? Did you know that when somebody dies, somebody's going to make money off that death? Because somebody's going to create, is going to make a coffin for the cops. That coffin will have to be sold. And somebody's going to transport that corpse. They have to be paid money. Somebody's going to dig the grave. They'll have to be paid money. Or a vault. Somebody's going to create a vault. They have to be given money. In fact, if anything, corpses are dressed. They are dressed up. Yeah. The mortuary attendant has to be paid money for preserving the body. So the occurrence of death, if somebody dies, that's already a business opportunity. Someone is going to solve all the problems. The embalming of the body will cost money. Yeah? The, the mortuary attendant will charge money. Those who transport will charge money. The coffin, the, you know, whatever. The makeup, because nowadays people apply makeup on corpses. Yeah? And uh, all, every single detail. When people meet in the funeral, they'll need to drink water. You see, somebody will have to sell that water to them. At some point, if people have traveled a long distance, they might need to eat some food. And that also costs money. You see now? Yeah? Now, when you go and get permits, burial permit, you pay money. So, you see, an occurrence is what will make you successful if you know how to handle what is required within an occurrence. Is it a wedding? Somebody will have to pay money. What is it? Is it a birthday party? Is it a baptismal service? Every single thing that's called an occurrence is an opportunity for you to make money. So here's where you need to bring your speed. <laughs> Are you seeing now? Here is where you need to bring your strength, your wisdom. Here is where you need to bring your understanding and your skills. Those five things. Your speed, your strength, your wisdom, your understanding, and your skill. Speed. Okay. Here's where you need to bring your speed. 
Here is where you need to bring your strength. Here's where you need to bring your wisdom. Here's where you need to bring your understanding. And here is where you need to bring your skills. So if there is an occurrence, bring those five and you'll succeed. Bring your speed. A person who moves quickly, you do things fast, faster than your competition. Be a person given to efficiency. No procrastination and no postponement. Okay, speed, speed, speed. You must not be a person who, uh, uh, who does their work shoddily. Yeah, you'll never find me missing the things I'm supposed to do. If I have an assignment, oh yes, I'll, I'll go right through. You see, I've started podcasts on Anchor. Every single day, I have to upload a podcast, okay? Some of them are 20 minutes long, others are slightly longer, yeah? But I have to upload a podcast. In fact, after this live broadcast, I'm going to upload a podcast on Anchor for you people to listen to. So please subscribe to my podcast. Just look for Joseph Helen on Anchor or or Google Podcasts, or any of the podcasts you know about. We are on five platforms. So listen to the messages. We have over 12 messages right now. Actually, 15. 15 going to 16, I think. Yeah. Powerful messages. You know, one plays and then it followed, it's followed by another. You can put it on repeat and just soak yourself in the word of God, the wisdom of God. So if you bring your speed and you bring your strength and you bring your wisdom and you bring your understanding, your discernment, your right your right judgment, and you bring your skill yeah, into an occurrence, you're going to be successful. There's always an occurrence. You see, if somebody falls sick, that's an occurrence. A doctor will be paid money to cure that person. Look at that. Can you just imagine everything? Everything is a business opportunity. Even somebody falling sick. Somebody has to look after them. When people feel hungry, somebody has to feed them. That's an occurrence. Okay, so time is defined as an occurrence. It's defined as an occasion. Occurrence and occasions, one and the same thing, really. Yeah? Time is defined as an occurrence, defined as an occasion. Okay? And time is also uh, defined as an experience. Okay? So if you have an experience, you can turn that experience into finances. All right? So time is an occurrence, an occasion. It's also an experience. Time is also defined as fortune. If you look it up in the Hebrew, time is fortune. That's why people say time is money. Okay? Your time is fortune. So any moment you spend time on something, like if you spend time listening to me, you are, in actual sense, getting fortunes because the word of God is riches. The Bible calls it the riches of the inheritance of the saints. The word of God is the riches of the inheritance of the saints. So when you hear the word of God, the word of God is going to give you a fortune. The word of God is going to give you experience. So time is an occurrence. Time is an occasion. Time is a fortune. Time is an experience. Okay? That's how you define time. Now the rich use their time wisely yeah, because they know it's a fortune. They know it's money. But poor people tend to waste time. In fact, more often than not, they spend time watching the rich. Yeah, instead of spending time learning from the rich, you need to spend your time learning from the rich. You shouldn't spend your time watching TV or movies all the time, unless it's your job to make movies. Okay, if you're going to learn from it, then watch it, watch it so that you learn to create your movies as well. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to learn one thing, that rich people don't waste their time because they know time is an occurrence, it's an occasion, time is money. They know that. They know that time is a fortune. It's an experience. Okay, do you know in business, uh, what we sell is an experience. If you want to drink a soda, for example, uh, it's not really the taste of the soda that matters. It's important because one needs their skill, one needs their wisdom, their strength, their discernment, and one needs their understanding and their speed to create something sweet like Coca Cola or something like Pepsi or any other sweet drink that you like. Yeah, but what sells the drink is not how sweet it tastes. What sells that drink is the experience it gives you. So the experience that your product or your services give, uh, the experience that it gives to your client is what will cause you to make money and that's what will cause your client to keep returning back to you. What experience did they get when they engaged you, when they came to your shop, what experience? You see, that's called time. So we sell time. Time is an occasion. Time is an occurrence. Time is an experience. Time is a fortune. So when somebody comes your way, yeah, what experience 
have they got? That's what they'll pay for. What occurrence is this? That's what they'll pay for. Okay? What fortune is this? Look at, look at what I got. I got myself a fortune. I bought something that's a fortune. That's what people pay for. Okay? So if you can turn your business, your services, and the things you do to an extraordinary experience to your people, to an occurrence that they cannot forget, to an occasion to write home about, to something that will translate to a fortune, then you're going to make money. So your skill, your speed, your understanding, your wisdom, and your strength, these things that are found in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11, the Bible says those things don't really bring success, but time and chance happens to all. So if you have those five, and then you create a wonderful experience, you create a great occasion with your products and with your services, and you create an experience that can never be forgotten and some fortune out of it, you're going to be a successful person. All right? So that's called time. I've defined for you time. Okay? Is that wonderful? I've defined for you time. So spend your time to learn things. Spend your time to be mentored. Spend your time improving your abilities. Spend your time in the presence of those that can lead you into the right direction. Now, if you look at the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. You see, experience, experience, experience time, 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 experience. Yeah? And the Bible says, And hope does not make us shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that's given to us. All right. So, experience is time but you have to be a person who is strong enough yeah to glory in tribulations because tribulation will make you patient the hardships you've gone through will make you a patient person you need patience because patience is what gives you experience patience is what gives you experience and remember experience is time so a patient person gains time they don't lose time a patient person gains time. They do not lose time. If you're patient, you will gain time. And when you gain time, you gain a fortune. Glory to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. If you gain time, you gain a fortune. How do you gain time? By experience. How do you get experience? By enduring hardships. When you endure hardships, if you want to have great experience in your marriage, ladies and gentlemen, then you need to endure the hardships found in the marriage. Then you'll have experience in the marriage. And experience, which is time, gives you hope. The one who has the time has hope. And the Bible says, and that hope does not disappoint. So you're not going to be disappointed in your business. You're not going to be disappointed in your products and in your services, in the work that you do. You're not going to be disappointed because hope does not make ashamed. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Let me see what my people are saying on Facebook. Okay, glory to God. Hallelujah. What are you guys saying on Facebook? Anything that I need to read? Hallelujah. Please share this with your friends. Share widely with your friends. Tell your friends about the apostle of love and the great things that the Lord is doing with us right now. Okay. By the way, one... <laughs> It looks like Mondays we've, we've had to be fighting battles because a tree fell on our power line. Last Monday, it was a, a hailstorm that stopped our power. We actually didn't come to you live last Monday. But today I said, I must come to you live, even if by candles, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm lighting my face using candles. And then <laughs> our generator worked and worked in the day and then went kaput. <laughs> And I said, I still will come to you. You see, nothing stops us. Tribulation gives you experience. Experience gives you hope. Yeah? And hope, it does not disappoint. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You see that? Yeah? Experience. Experience is time. So tribulation gives you patience. And patience gives you experience. And experience gives you what? Hope. Tribulation gives you patience. Patience gives you experience. Experience gives you hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in your spirit. So I've defined for you time. Time is an occurrence. It's an occasion. It's an experience. 
time is a fortune okay so how do you cause time to work for your benefit make sure that anytime somebody comes your way they have an experience of a lifetime it's an occasion to remember okay it's an occurrence to write home about it's a fortune that they will value forever just being with you that's how you become a success all right glory to jesus so what is chance then what is chance it's an encounter with a person or an event chance is an encounter okay so every single one of you has an, an encounter have you encountered anyone or anything that's called a chance remember time and chance happens to everybody your success and your prosperity is based on time and chance glory to jesus and what is a chance a chance is an encounter okay an encounter with a person or with an event okay the moment you have an encounter that's called a chance. That's your chance. It's a meeting with a person or with a circumstance. So if you meet with a person or you meet with a circumstance, that's called a chance. So it's an occurrence, okay, an encounter. Chance is an encounter with a person or with an event, okay? So if you just get out of your house and you meet somebody, that's called a chance. That person can be a business partner. That person can be your financier. That person can be your destiny helper. You see, right now you're meeting with me online. That's called a chance. And that's what gives you success in the name of Jesus. Okay, so a chance is an encounter with a person or an event. It's a meeting with a person or a circumstance. Okay, it's when you reach out to a destiny helper. That's called a chance. All right, a go-between. That's also a chance, like a broker or an agent. So an agent or a broker is a go-between that's a chance okay so if you know that somebody's looking for mushrooms for example and you know where to find them you quickly go and buy the mushrooms and sell to them uh maybe at a certain profit that's how you do business that's what entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship is looking to see where there's a problem and solving it looking to see where there's a challenge and making it easy looking to see where people are struggling and then sorting out their problem that thing that makes them struggle Look for anything that's irritating and then fix it. And that's what we call entrepreneurship. It's as simple as that. If you can solve people's problems consistently, you're an entrepreneur. Okay. But in your entrepreneurship, you must make sure that people are getting the best experience. That whenever they deal with you, it's an occasion that can be remembered. Something that is extraordinary and beautiful. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. Are you learning something, you wonderful people? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when time and chance are in place, and when you use them correctly, your swiftness, strength, wisdom, understanding, and skills will bring you lasting riches. Okay, that's when you use your time and your chance correctly. All right, glory to Jesus. Now, I'll tell you a little story. There was a, a swift, strong, wise, and designing and skillful man. He had these five attributes that I've been talking about. He, however, failed to use that occurrence and that experience, that encounter, that meeting and that fortune, time and chance, for his benefit. There was a wise man, yeah, very skillful, but he didn't use his time and chance correctly, yeah. He was soon forgotten. How sad. Soon forgotten. And the Bible says that a poor man's wisdom is always ignored. So choose to speak riches so that your words can activate riches in your life. That way you'll be heard even if you just whisper. Okay? So if you follow the instructions, this, the, the advice I'm giving you, if you follow these things, that let's say you're a teacher, make sure your students are getting an experience of a lifetime. Second to none, you'll make money. I promise you. Let me tell you something. I made my first million. I became a millionaire as a teacher. The service I was rendering was that of teaching, pedagogy. Okay? I still teach up to date. See, right now I'm teaching you. Yeah? God has given me the gift of apostolic and prophetic teaching. Okay? The ability to cause things to, you know, to make you to easily understand things. Okay? Glory to Jesus. All right. So... One of the ways I handled my teaching career is I ensured that my students understood the things I taught. 
I still do that today. You see how I'm meticulous when I'm explaining scriptures to you. Yeah, that's that's the, the anointing for teaching, the grace for teaching. So you have to do it meticulously and you have to do it consistently. Remember, we've been coming to you every single day, sometimes seven days a week. And sometimes, you know, like last Monday, we couldn't come to you because we didn't have power. It was all, you know, there was total power cut because our transformer blew up. And some of these things happened. This I'm not seeing any demonic interference, really. I'm just seeing uh, the things that need to be serviced, yeah? Today, a tree fell. You know, we live in a place with lots and lots of trees. So a tree fell onto a power line and cut it off. So, you know, the guys are responsible for power trying to restore it. And we had a generator and the generator worked and worked and worked and worked and decided it got tired so we're going to service it as well that's fine we don't complain when you go through some of these things we innovate whenever you're faced with the challenge innovate this is why i decided to light myself up with candles and now here i am talking to you imagine this is candle candle lit <laughs> candle <laughs> this is a candle lit teaching yeah we are coming live to you on a phone and the lighting that you see on my face is of candles <laughs> glory to god yeah can i show you one of the candles yeah let me show you one of the candles yep yeah it's one of the candles there see nice yeah isn't that beautiful look at that one of the candles beautiful yeah that's what's lighting my face here hallelujah okay so we are innovative nothing slows us down nothing stops us we carry on, come rain, come sunshine. Okay? So I've, I've explained to you what a chance is. So there's a, there was a, a, a wise guy. Yeah? But this wise guy, let, let me just read it for you. It's found in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 14 to 16. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 14 to 16. It says, there was a little city and, and few men. There was a little city and few men within it. Yeah? A little city with few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built a great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. He had wisdom. So you see he had those things that we talked about. Speed. Because you need speed to fight in a war. And then he had strength. You need to be strong to fight in a war. Okay. And then he had what? Wisdom, the Bible says. By wisdom, he delivered the city. And then he had what else? He had discernment. Yeah, understanding. You need to understand the art of war for you to succeed as a warrior. And then he had what we call skill. Five things. So with that, he delivered the city. Glory to Jesus. Okay? Now, verse 15 says... Uh, now there was found in it a poor wise man. This is Ecclesiastes 9, verse 15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. He was poor, but wise. So you can be wise and still be poor. And the Bible says, He by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Why? He didn't know how to use his chance and his time correctly. This war was an opportunity for business. Hmm. It was an opportunity for business. He didn't use his time and chance correctly. There was, a, there was a, an opportunity, because see, I told you that time and chance, um, time and chance, uh, time, the definition of time is an occurrence, an occasion, an experience, and fortune. And war is an, a, an experience, isn't it? War is an occasion, it's an occurrence. And this guy just goes and wins the war and nobody remembers him because he was a poor guy, okay? Uh, he didn't use that encounter correctly, you know? A meeting, remember, chance. Um, I defined chance to you as an en encounter with a person or an event. So this is an event he encountered, war. A meeting with a person or a circumstance. A reaching out to destiny, you know, going between. So this guy would have turned this thing into what? a business he delivered a city but the guys this this fellow didn't even go to the king to say here's my invoice for fighting this battle he remained poor how foolish 
He went, fought the battle, and went back home poor. He should have, he should have costed this thing. He should have costed this thing. His ingenuity, yeah, his ability to think of a solution. He should have said, "This will cost you this number of, you know, dollars," and my ability to fight will cost this number of dollars. The way I've jeopardized my life, this number of dollars. Because now I've become a hero in your community, I need this kind of allowance for the rest of my life. He should have costed this thing, but the man didn't know there was time and chance there. He wasted his time, wasted his chance, remained poor. That's why the Bible says, the wisdom of a poor man is never remembered. How sad. Because a poor person will just go and do their thing. You, I've seen many poor people win medals in athletics. A lot of people from my country run, they do this marathon, long distance running, and they're always winning. But the strangest thing is this. Most of them just end up poor. You see, because they waste the chance of that opportunity. Ima imagine all the cameras are pointing at you when you are winning a medal in the Olympics or any of these this games. This is the moment where you can endorse products. This is the moment where you can start signing deals for people to advertise. Every time your name is mentioned, great companies advertise. But if you don't know it's a time and a chance, you go back home with your gold medal and you're still broke. You see, time and chance happens to all, the Bible says. So nobody should ever say, oh, I don't know what to do. There's time and chance for you. There's an occurrence. There is an occasion, there's an experience, there's fortune where you are. That's what the Bible says. Okay? So, verse 16 in Ecclesiastes 9 says, Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are never heard. Why is a poor man a poor man? Because poor people waste time, and they waste chances. That's, what, that's the reason most people are poor. They waste time, waste chances. They went to school, wasted time, and wasted their chance. Now they've been given opportunity to wash the car of some rich fellow. They waste that chance. They waste that time. You find the, the rich guy woke up early in the morning to go to work. And the guy said, oh, there, uh, it, it rained, so I couldn't come in time. So he doesn't wash the guy's car. He wastes that time and wastes the chance. But if you were to wash the car and wash it so well, ah, until the rich man says, wow, where is this guy who washes my car? Here, take this $20 and buy yourself, you know, some breakfast or some lunch. And then he just keeps doing this thing, not postponing it, not procrastinating. Just washing the car will turn that guy into a millionaire. Because the rich man will start thinking of what else to do. The thing about rich people is that if you do your work well, they always want to favor you. You see, they want to do something extra for you. If you do your work well, if you don't have to be reminded all the time, you're always coming late, you know. Sometimes you're there, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're doing it, sometimes you're not. That's how people become poor. You have to be consistent. Constant. Consistent. That's how you become a success in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're learning something beautiful here, okay? So never take your daily experiences and happenings lightly. The things you go through in life are defined as time and chance. Even if you go through a negative experience, it's a time and it's a chance. It's an opportunity for you to be successful, yeah? Are you getting that? Now, the things you go through in life are defined as time and chance. If you can monetize them by being the problem solver... You will win the race, win the battle, get the bread, enjoy the riches, obtain the favor. Okay. You understand that? You'll be accepted. You'll be charming. Your business opportunities will be charming. Glory to God. Okay. Your work will be elegant. People look at your work and say, wow, this is charming. This is, this is acceptable. So begin to utilize your time and your chance correctly and you'll see success. All right. Wonderful. I'm done. Thank you so much for tuning in. You wonderful people. Stella, God bless you. Nelly, God bless you. Dennis, my son, God bless you. Fanti George, God bless you. Faith, God bless you. France, God bless you. I love you guys so very much. Please share this widely. Thank you so much for being uh, wonderful. Uh, today, I've been coming to you uh, using <laughs> the candles. 
All right. Okay. But I, I hope you saw me clearly and you're able to hear my voice. God bless you. Please share this widely with your friends. Okay. I'm going to post it on YouTube as well. Usually we come live on Facebook and YouTube, but because uh, our power is down and when the power is down, the internet is affected. Okay. And uh, a lot of things are affected. Um, a tree fell on our power line, but it's being rectified by the power people right now. And our generator worked the whole day and just decided I need a breather. So it went kaput. So we'll restore it tomorrow. Glory to Jesus. Okay. Uh, God is wonderful. Um, so please share this widely. I've also posted this on my Facebook page. So you can actually go and read. You see how we work. Yeah. We work efficiently. We bring you the video, but there's also text on Facebook already. Efficiency. No procrastination. No postponement. We are, we are people of speed, we are people of strength, we are people of wisdom, we are people of discernment, we are people of skill. That's how you become a successful person in life, okay? Nothing postponed. So I love you guys. Share this widely. Please subscribe to our podcast as well. Go to Joseph Helen on Anchor Podcast or any other podcast platform. You look for Joseph Helen and you'll find have wonderful teachings that I've been giving to you. In fact, after this, I'm going to upload another teaching on the podcast, okay? You guys are wonderful. I love you so very much. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll be teaching you on prophecy, how to prophesy and how to use prophecy for your own benefit, okay? I love you guys. Enjoy the evening, okay? I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Enjoy the day, enjoy the evening. Whatever time of the day you're watching us, just know that we love you. If you are watching me and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose again for my justification and for my acquittal. Today, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm now born from above. I'm saved. Hallelujah. If you said that, now you're saved. You're a child of God. So your time and chance is going to work for you, even up to eternity. All right? Have a wonderful time. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. You guys are amazing and wonderful. If there's any problem, sickness, or disease, as I've been talking to you, healing has been happening. Deliverance has been happening. Provision is coming your way. Miracles are happening. For us, miracles are normal. Yeah, wherever we are, miracles happen all the time. Healings, deliverance, you know, provision. God is working for you, moving in your life consistently, okay? That's why I don't always have to say be healed. The moment you're connected to this broadcast, healing happens automatically. You know, all your needs are met. You don't even need to mention them. The moment we're connected like this, you find all your needs are met because angels are all over the place working to help you. All right, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.